Hi, my name is Carsten Baum and I will now present you the Mac and Cheese Zero Knowledge Proof System for Boolean and Arithmetic Circuits with nested disjunctions. This is joint work with Alex Malozimov and Mark Rosen from Galois and Peter Scholl from Aarhus University. As a, a quick overview in a nutshell, Mac and Cheese is a commit and proof style Zero Knowledge Proof for uh, arbitrary circuits over any field. It has specific optimizations that allow it to support nested disjunctions more efficiently, and it's practically efficient. Our implementation that includes both the pre-processing and the online phase of the zero knowledge proof system achieves uh, 140 nanoseconds per proven end gate or 1.5 milliseconds per multiplication over a 61 build, a bit field. And uh, our proof system asymptotically sends approximately one field element for any kind of multiplication or three field elements uh, if no amortizations are being used. Before I will go into the details of the mac and cheese proof system, let me recap some definitions uh, which are necessary for understanding how uh, mac and cheese actually works. So let us assume um, that we want to show that a statement x is in a language l. Then, you know, uh, we could just consider um, that there is a, a Turing machine which uh, accepts uh, x together with a witness w um, in polynomial time. Um, an alternative uh, view which we use in this paper, which is uh, much more useful and is generally being used in, uh, in many zero knowledge proof systems, is that there exists a circuit C which can be obtained from uh, the statement X and we say that uh, X is in the language L if there exists a witness W such that the circuit when evaluated on the witness W evaluates to zero. So uh, only uh, if and only if the circuit evaluates to zero uh, we say that uh, X is in the language and here W is uh, considered as a witness. And uh, if we just uh, just write out that circuit, and alternatively we could view that as um, uh, many gates with inputs and outputs, as shown here, and uh, the inputs uh, of the top level of gates uh, will be fed with uh, the witness W, with the individual field elements from the witness, and then one evaluates uh, each of the gates uh, throughout the whole circuits until um, the output of the last gate has been obtained and then we just consider if uh, the output of that last gate is being zero or not. And uh, we can use this kind of formulation in uh, when constructing a zero knowledge proof where the view is now that the prover uh, knows uh, the circuit C and uh, so does the verifier and the prover additionally has uh, the witness w now the prover wants to convince the verifier that uh, the statement is true so that uh, c on w evaluates to zero uh, so the two run an interactive uh, protocol which has uh, at the end the verifier saying that he uh, either accepts or rejects and this uh, usually comes with three properties that we want for zero knowledge proofs namely the protocol is complete if w is indeed a witness for c uh, then the an honest verifier will always accept uh, additionally we have soundness meaning that uh, if the prover uh, if the statement is not true then the prover cannot convince the verifier in this work we will use uh, knowledge soundness meaning that if a prover can convince a verifier with decent probability then one would be able to extract a, uh, with a true witness w uh, for the statement and our protocol is zero knowledge meaning that uh, all the verifier learns is if the statement is true or not but it uh, in particular does not learn any information about the witness w a well-known technique for constructing zero knowledge proofs is the so-called commit and proof paradigm here one uses homomorphic commitments in order to construct a zero knowledge proof and the starting point is the uh, protocol due to Kramer and Damgo, which uses uh, commitments based on discrete lock assumptions. So let's assume that uh, we have a circuit C and we want to convince the verifier uh, that C uh, applied to some witness W is zero. So what the prover does is it commits to the individual elements of the witness W, uh, all of them individual commitments, 
then it uh, computes the outputs of all the uh, intermediate gates and it proves in zero knowledge that uh, the commitments to the outputs of each gate are consistent with the inputs of each of the gates. So that means by recursively, recursively applying uh, this, uh, this proof for each of the gates, we in the end get that uh, the output uh, can be opened to zero if and only if the witness was actually valid for a certain circuit C. This approach for commit and proof actually only needs linearly homomorphic commitments, and this is well known. Here, um, what this means is that the verifier can uh, compute a uh, commitment to uh, alpha x plus beta y uh, plus gamma from commitments to x and y and uh, publicly known values alpha, beta and gamma without any interaction with the prover. So the parties do not have to communicate in order to transform commitments uh, into uh, linearly related commitments. So if we want to evaluate linear gates or prove anything about the output of a linear gate, then we only have to uh, apply uh, this homomorphism and do not need any interaction in order to prove this uh, relation. Whereas for uh, multiplication gates, um, what one usually does is one uh, the, the prover commits to a random multiplication triple as well as to the uh, product Z that uh, should come out of this uh, multiplication gate. And then one uses uh, the so-called uh, Beaver circuit randomization technique in order to prove that um, the commitment in Z opens uh, to a commitment of X multiplied with Y. And for this one uses the uh, multiplication triple that uh, the prover additionally had to commit to. These are the general ideas, which you can also find in the mac and cheese protocol, although we alter them uh, in order to uh, obtain a highly efficient zero knowledge uh, proof system. Um, the foundation uh, of our uh, proof system are so-called uh, vector oblivious linear evaluations, where uh, oblivious linear evaluation, or OLE for short, uh, can be seen as a, a generalization of oblivious transfers to an arbitrary field uh, F. Here, the sender inputs alpha and beta into our uh, OLE box, while uh, the receiver inputs R and obtains the correlation alpha times R plus beta. Um, here, uh, the sender doesn't learn anything about R, while the verifier doesn't learn, uh, uh, the receiver doesn't learn anything beyond this linear relation. And uh, vector OLE is uh, a version of uh, OLE where if we have multiple oblivious linear evaluations, um, then they will all have the same alpha uh, across uh, all the different uh, instances. And there exist very fast uh, instantiations that allow you to uh, obtain lots of uh, VOLE correlations uh, based on the work of Boyle et al. And these uh, in particular need a very small uh, communication of let's say approximately 0.4 bits per uh, correlation and a small amount of computation. So uh, approximately 80 to 85 nanoseconds uh, for one uh, vector OLE instance. In our work, we instantiate the commitments uh, using uh, linearly homomorphic max, which are instantiated from this uh, vector OLE. So let's say we have a random uh, vector OLE instance where uh, we assume that the prover actually inputs R into a vector OLE, whereas the verifier inputs alpha and beta. The prover additionally has the value M, which we now consider as an information theoretic MAC uh, on the message R under the key alpha and beta. This uh, on its own is already uh, linearly homomorphic over F, which one can easily verify. Now, uh, how can this be used as a commitment scheme? Well, uh, assuming we can make lots of these correlations uh, for random R, then in order to commit to a fixed value X, the prover can simply send the difference between X and the random value R um, to the verifier. The verifier locally updates his value beta. And now one can easily see that uh, by adjusting uh, beta, uh, now both parties together hold a correlation um, which max the value x using alpha and beta prime uh, as, as keys. And in order to open a commitment, the prover simply sends x as well as the mac m to the verifier who checks the uh, relation with alpha and beta prime. Um, this is um, only uh, as uh, binding as the uh, size of the field. So if we want to use this with 
uh, for example, bits, then uh, one would either have to repeat this multiple times or use subfield vector OLE, where R comes from a, a subfield uh, of where uh, alpha and beta actually come from. And also one can easily see that this is a designated verifier scheme. Namely, the verifier has some secret randomness, which is alpha and beta. Uh, if the prover would ever get hold of uh, alpha and beta, then it could forge proofs. So the verifier must keep uh, this as a secret. Using these information theoretic max, we can now outline uh, a simple version of the mac and cheese protocol. Here, the prover initially commits to all the elements of the witness and then evaluates uh, the circuit gate by gate and proves that um, all the gate outputs are uh, committed correctly. Now for the linear gates, proving this is easy because we can use the um, linear homomorphism of the uh, information theoretic max uh, in order to prove that multiplications are done correctly. What the prover does is an optimization of Beaver's approach, where it, uh, in addition to the output of the uh, multiplication, uh, commits to an auxiliary value C, which is derived from um, a random value A. And uh, remember that random commitments can be done cheaply in uh, vector OLE. And uh, A is multiplied with uh, one of the terms of the uh, multiplication that we want to verify. Now the verifier sends a random challenge. <clears throat> which is used in order to create a and to open a linear relation. And then uh, the prover additionally shows that uh, this linear, uh, linear relation uh, evaluates to zero. Now, the good thing about uh, zero checks is that uh, one only has to send the MAC because uh, the verifier already knows what to expect, namely that uh, the committed value there must be zero. And in particular, the verifier then only has to check if the value being sent is the same as the value that already has, namely the value beta. Now, um, this simple multiplication check sends three field elements uh, per multiplication, which one can easily verify. Um, but this only holds even true for large fields. For small fields, the overhead might be even bigger. So the question is if we can actually uh, do multiplication verification with less overhead. And we show that this is actually possible by using the recursive dot product check of uh, Bonnet et al. Um, this increases the round complexity for checking multiplications from a constant number of rounds to something that is logarithmic in the number of multiplications that we want to check. This again can we get down to a constant by using the fiat Shamir transform. And the communication improves to one plus epsilon field elements per um, multiplication or also per uh, verified end relation, where the constant uh, is uh, 0 0.008 for uh, 1 million multiplications or 1 million uh, ends that we uh, verify at once. And if you want to learn uh, in more detail how this actually works, uh, I'd like to refer you to the paper for more details. As already mentioned in the beginning, a special feature of mac and cheese is that it can more efficiently deal with nested disjunctions. So we'll now explain what these are and how we actually handle them in our proof system. Uh, for a disjunction, uh, we uh, consider that there are multiple subcircuits, in this example, C1 and C2. And uh, our circuit will evaluate to, uh, to zero, meaning uh, the witness is valid uh, if uh, the first circuit evaluates to zero or the second circuit evaluates to zero, or maybe both of them at the same time. Um, and usually, if we just feed such a circuit uh, into a proof system, then we would have to uh, transfer communication for uh, both of these uh, sub-circuits. Now, uh, what we want to achieve is that we only communicate information that is proportional to the longest branch. Um, that means that if, for example, we have uh, 100 uh, parallel branches and only one of them evaluates to zero, then our proof uh, would only need to communicate one uh, of the 100 branches uh, and we would uh, save a, a factor of 100 in communication. Now, the key observation that we make is that the prover's messages uh, that uh, have to be sent in order to uh, prove that one uh, of the branches uh, evaluates to zero, well, all of these are um, appearing to the verifier as random field elements, right? If you prove that a multiplication is, uh, is correct or if you uh, commit to an additional value, then all the verifier ever sees are uh, random uh, field elements. So, what we just do is that uh, the verifier, uh, since uh, uh, it can't distinguish between the individual branches uh, when messages come in, 
Well, we only sent him messages uh, that can be used uh, to uh, evaluate the true branch. But since he doesn't know what these messages are there for, it will just uh, use uh, the same uh, messages for all the branches uh, at the same time. Right, so in our example, if for example, the first uh, circuit was true, uh, we only sent the messages for the first circuit, but the verifier will uh, also try to verify the second uh, sub-circuit using this, but it will never notice that it's just getting garbage there. Now, in more detail, uh, how do we uh, do disjunctive proofs in mac and cheese? Well, let's assume we have m uh, different uh, clauses c1 to cm, uh, where uh, there's a witness that makes at least one of them uh, evaluate to zero. As mentioned, the prover sends messages uh, for evaluating uh, this one that evaluates to zero. In this case, that's called ci. The verifier sends random challenges for all the branches, as he did before. Um, now, both parties evaluate each branch uh, locally um, based on the random challenges uh, from the verifier. So this implicitly um, defines uh, the uh, commitments to the outputs of all of the branches. What one can prove is that uh, all of these commitments, uh, if, if uh, the witness didn't make uh, this branch to zero, um, then uh, one would definitely get something else than zero, even if one uh, evaluates uh, on garbage messages. So the prover can't use this uh, in order to uh, cheat um, in the process. And then, um, so one of the uh, one of these commitments must be zero, the others are random, uh, but you know the prover can determine what they actually are. And then the parties just use an or proof, uh, which shows that there exists uh, one uh, of these commitments that is actually zero. And this is a standard technique uh, used uh, already by uh, Kramer, Damgaard and uh, Sean Marcus in 94 for uh, Sigma protocols, which we adapt to commit and prove style systems. Now, uh, the overall communication of this is uh, uh, scaling in the uh, length of the longest branch, plus an additional uh, uh, O of M uh, field elements which are necessary in order to perform the OR proof. And this improves uh, by a factor of m, actually over the naive approach, ignoring the uh, O of m for a second, uh, where for the naive approach, we would have to prove all branches uh, towards the verifier. One can then also modify uh, this uh, approach to support uh, statements where uh, the prover tries to show that k out of the sub-circuits uh, evaluate to zero. Here, one uh, replaces the uh, one out of m uh, or proof with the threshold or proof of CDS94. Um, again, this improves the overall communication uh, to a factor uh, to k times uh, the longest uh, subcircuit, whereas the naive approach uh, only com uh, needs to communicate uh, all of the subcircuits. And then we can also uh, prove disjunctions inside disjunctions, so we can nest um, our uh, uh, disjunction proofs uh, into each other, and there can be multiple layers uh, of these at the same time. As mentioned, in order to prove such a disjunction, um, we have to communicate something that scales in the uh, longest uh, branch of uh, disjunction. This seems to be unavoidable, but additionally, we have to uh, communicate uh, m field elements in order to do the OR proof, where m is the number of branches. Now, let's see uh, how one can uh, reduce this overhead. And in, uh, in order to understand what is going on there, um, let's say uh, instead of doing an OR proof, uh, we do an alternative proof where we show that the product um, of all the uh, output commitments uh, of the uh, individual branches uh, is actually zero. Now, uh, this is equivalent, uh, at least for um, uh, a simple disjunction, to um, uh, computing an OR proof because only if uh, at least one of these um, uh, values y i is actually zero, one will uh, get to a value that is actually zero. Now, uh, why can this be uh, done with uh, less overhead? Well, let's assume we have uh, two branches uh, where the first one is actually zero, whereas the second one is uh, some, let's, let's say, random value. Um, then uh, now using just one multiplication, we can do the OR proof, right? We just uh, multiply y1 with y2 and uh, prove that this is actually zero. Now, uh, if we have uh, more branches, let's say y3 and y4, um, then um, we would now do the same thing, 
Um, but uh, what one would observe is that combining y1 and y2 with a multiplication gate um, leads to a sub-circuit um, and y3 and y4 uh, together with the multiplication gate is again a, a sub-circuit and we can recursively apply the technique from before, meaning that we now um, take the output of the left uh, multiplication gate, uh, use this uh, you know, in the simulation of the right branch and uh, now do a multiplication proof on uh, both of these branches um, and again, this will evaluate to zero if uh, one of the two is actually zero. And the cool thing is, well, we only had to communicate um, um, something for the true branches uh, of this uh, uh, of the circuit, whereas for the right uh, top right uh, multiplication gate, we didn't actually have to send uh, information. And if one uh, does the math, then this means that uh, one actually has to send uh, something that scales uh, logarithmically in the number of uh, branches um, instead of uh, something that is linear in the number of branches. As was mentioned in the introduction, we implemented mac and cheese and now also want to report uh, on the efficiency of our uh, proof system. Uh, mac and cheese uh, has been implemented in uh, Rust by us both uh, the offline, meaning the vector world generation, as well as the online phase in non-interactive fashion using the fiat Shamir transform. Uh, it's implemented based on the Swanky secure computation framework uh, by Galua. And uh, we plan to open source it as soon as possible, uh, although some things uh, are currently being uh, re-implemented. Um, our mac and cheese implementation uh, supports input from uh, the ZK interface project. Um, we can uh, support various uh, fields such as uh, f uh, 2 to the 61 minus 1 uh, or also proofs that are uh, just over f2 and uh, our optimizations meaning nested disjunctions uh, are uh, used in our uh, mac and cheese uh, implementation and we also have these uh, optimized multiplications which only communicate uh, approximately one field element per multiplication. We benchmark the performance of our implementation in a setting where proof and verify are connected uh, over a uh, network with 95 millisecond ping and 2.25 megabytes per second of bandwidth. Our benchmarks include the runtimes necessary to pre-compute the vector OLEs. And in this setting, uh, mac and cheese requires 1.5 microseconds to prove um, one uh, multiplication gate in F2 to the 61 minus 1 or 140 nanoseconds in order to prove one multiplication in the uh, circuit uh, in a circuit over F2. Um, and both of these are uh, in the setting where we use our amortization technique that only uh, communicates approximately one uh, field element per multiplication. Uh, to show that our uh, improvement for this junction uh, is actually uh, visible in terms of uh, communication, uh, if we have uh, multiple branches, each of which are uh, of 1 billion AND gates, then we can see that in order to prove eight of these branches, we only have to send 75 bytes more than when we want to prove only one of these branches. At the same time, uh, the proof uh, runtime uh, still increases uh, because the proof and the verifier have to uh, evaluate, uh, still have to evaluate uh, all of the branches locally but we get this improvement in terms of communication. Now with all of this, let's put uh, mac and cheese into perspective with respect to other works uh, that do uh, large scale, scale zero knowledge proofs. Uh, stack gobbling has been introduced by Heath and Kolesnikov and uses uh, gobbled circuits in order to prove uh, statements about uh, circuits over F2. Here we can see that mac and cheese actually uh, communicates uh, a lot less uh, per uh, per end gate, uh, while um, we also, uh, while they also have disjunctions such as we uh, have, Wolverine can uh, possibly also be extended to support disjunctions, and the uh, performance of Wolverine is actually comparable uh, in terms of communication and round complexity to our uh, simple mac and cheese uh, protocol, means without the amortized uh, proofs. Line point CK introduced by Dittmer et al. Um, has a uh, comparable uh, efficiency to our uh, batched uh, mac and cheese approach in terms of uh, uh, in terms of communication uh, over over large fields, and uh, line points zero knowledge has been uh, further developed in the uh, Quicksilver protocol, 
um, which uh, has a similar, which has a comparable performance to ours. Um, so they get rid of the uh, epsilon factor uh, that we have and have uh, twice as much uh, throughput in terms of multiplication, million multiplications per second than uh, what we do. But to the best of our knowledge, Quicksilver um, can uh, at least not simply be extended to also support uh, these nested disjunctions that mac and cheese actually has. Uh, in summary, uh, mac and cheese uh, is a designated verifier zero knowledge proof system uh, that is particularly suitable for large scale uh, zero knowledge, so zero knowledge with large circuits. We use uh, vector OLEs in order to instantiate uh, information theoretic max and get a commit and proof style protocol. Um, essentially, most of the communication only flows from the prover to the verifier. So we uh, get two constant uh, rounds using a fiat Shamir transform and we can optimize um, these junctions in order to uh, reduce communication, but unfortunately not computation. Our communication is approximately one field element per uh, multiplication gate for any field. And uh, as uh, mentioned, we have a highly efficient implementation uh, that is uh, as efficient as the state of the art. Um, if you want to learn more, uh, I'd like to uh, refer you to uh, the paper, or if you have questions, uh, feel free to either uh, contact us uh, during the uh, online talk at Crypto or uh, by email. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention.